Lexus Dirty Maintenance Show. Sweet power slide. <laughs>What's going on Skid? Lex here with another Dirty Maintenance Show and today I want to talk about superheat. Now there's lots of videos about superheat but I want to make one too. Maybe this can help out my fellow Dirty Maintenance guys. I wanted to do it on an actual real unit and do my best to explain what it is and what's going on in the system and how to get your target superheat which is what you want. So the first thing I do before you even charge a unit, you got to make sure if you have a piston or a fixed orifice, which is what this is. You want to make sure you have a piston or a TXV. If you have a piston, which is this right here, it goes down into there and you just screw that on. If you have a piston, you're going to charge by superheat. And if you have a TXV, you're going to charge by subcool. But today we're just going to talk about superheat. Subcool is a whole other video. We won't go there just to not have any confusion. So yeah, before you charge a unit, go to your air handler and see if you have a piston. This is what they look like. And I'll post a picture of a TXV also so you know what it looks like. Okay, today I'm going to be doing the example on an off unit. This is just a hypothetical situation. So the unit will be off because I have the, uh, the door off and stuff upstairs on the air handler. So the pressures and everything would be wrong. Oh, unit over there just fired up. So yeah, this is just a hypothetical situation. The unit is not running. So first I come down here. I know it's a piston. I'm going to be charging by superheat. So I come down here and I put my gauges on. Blue on the low side, red on the high side. I let it run for about 15 minutes and then I get my pressures. So it says here 120, 120 PSI is my pressure and my saturation is 40. So that means that the refrigerant is coming out of this liquid line the little liquid line here and hitting that piston up in the indoor air handler and boiling at 40 degrees. That's my saturation. Then I get my line temp. I have my, my temperature coupling to the, to the low side, the suction side. I get my line temp. My line temp is 52 and my saturation is 40. That is a 12 degree superheat. All you do is take 52 and subtract 40. That gives you a 12 degree superheat. And if you had R22, you would go by the green circle on the outside. But I have R410A, so I go by the, the pink on the inside. So the refrigerant is leaving the condenser on this little liquid line and hitting that piston up in the indoor air handler and boiling at 40. So line temp minus saturation is your superheat. And I have a 12 degree superheat. Now we want to get our target superheat though. That's what we want. That's what we want. We want to get our target superheat so the system is running good and it's efficient. So now I'll take you upstairs and we'll talk about it up there. All right, so the refrigerant is leaving the outside condenser on the, on the little line, the high side, the liquid line. It's coming up into the apartment, coming this way. Boom, hits the, the piston in here. This is where it's boiling at 40 degrees. Remember outside on our gauge? I actually brought the gauges in so that these would actually be on the unit outside but we can bring them in now see that 40 Let's see if I can get that on camera so this is where it's boiling at 40 that's our saturation point 
It's coming through the capillary tubes and it enters the coil as a mixture of gas and liquid. So it comes into the coil as a gas and a liquid. It's traveling through. And as it's traveling through, the air, the warm air inside the apartment is going through the coil, warming that refrigerant even more. So by the time it gets about halfway, it should go from a liquid to a gas, all gas. There should be no liquid in the refrigerant by the time it comes out. It comes out of the suction side, the big line here, it's in the armor flex. Comes up and back out to the condenser where, you're, where you got your thermocouple on at 52. So the warm air from the apartment moving over this coil is what superheats your refrigerant and brings it to 52. From 40 to 52. Okay, now we're going to need to, to get our target superheat. So to get target superheat, you need to get your wet bulb and your dry bulb. You're going to do the wet bulb inside, inside the air handler. This is what I use, the Field Piece ST4. But you don't have to use this. There's lots of ways to get it. There's actually little Field Piece sticks you can use. Well, this is what I use. I would turn the sink on and, and wet the sock here. I'd wet it real good. Remember that the unit's off. I'm just doing a dry run here for you. I'd wet the whole sock real good. And come over to my unit. And I would clip it as close to the coil as I can. Just like that. And the air from the inside the apartment would be blowing over that sock and it would give me my wet bulb. All right, I've let, I've let the air blow over the sock for about 30 to 45 seconds and it seems like it's stabilizing at 68. So I have a 68 degree wet bulb. Now we go outside and do our dry bulb. All right, dry bulb is pretty much your outdoor ambient temperature in the shade. Make sure you do your dry bulb in the shade. You don't want to be in the sun. And I'd come out, I still got my, my field piece, ST4 here. And I would just hold it up by the condenser, a few inches off. As you can see, there's no sock on it like you like there is with the wet bulb. It's just a, a dry temperature probe, nothing on it. So I'd hold it out here in the shade and get my, my dry bulb, which is 95. Pretty hot day out here today. Got a pretty high wet bulb, high dry bulb. So yeah, my, my dry bulb is 95 degrees. Then I would take all my measurements, write them down, and put them in my cool little app here that I use, the Emerson Check and Charge. You don't have to use it though. There's lots of ways to do this. That's just how I do it. All right, after I get all my indoor wet bulb and dry bulb, vapor pressures and everything I'll go to my app here I have 410A required superheat that is pretty much your target superheat and then I would pull out my notepad here just so I remember everything my wet bulb was 68 Condenser dry bulb was 95. My vapor pressure is 120. And my line temp. Remember the line temp there? Get your temperature coupling. Line temp was 52. Then you hit calculate. 
you have an 11 degree superheat but your target superheat is 14 and that's how I do it if you have a high superheat let's say my current operating superheat was 44 that means I'm low on charge or you got some other issues going on but if the superheat was low I would need to recover the charge say the superheat was 5 I need to recover yeah so my target superheat is 14 I have an 11 degree superheat which is within 3 I'll take that but if you have a zero superheat that means you have liquid coming back to your suction line and that's not good it means it's getting liquid into your compressor and your compressor is on borrowed time so if you have a zero superheat you got problems you can try to recover and bring it up and you got other issues going on I hope this helps some of my fellow maintenance guys it'll save you a lot of heartache it'll save you from overcharging and undercharging and uh, save you from having to switch out compressors and stuff because if you have a zero superheat you have liquid going to your compressor and that is no bueno I hope this helps guys thank you for watching the dirty maintenance show <laughs>